So this example here, we have what's called the floor function. Now this, the way you write it, it looks like almost like you did square brackets, except there's no top on them. And what this is, it's your inputs X, your output is always going to be a whole number, an integer. But if it's, uh, if it's, you know, one, two, or three, the output is one, two, or three. But if it's like 1.1, 1.2, it truncates it. Uh, rounded is not quite the right word because you're throwing away all the decimal part. And so any one point anything, even 1.99 goes down to one. Uh, but as soon as you go to two or higher, the output would be two. Until you hit three, then the output will always be three. The graph right here, of the floor function. So between zero and one, your Y value is zero. As soon as you hit the X value one, your output becomes Y value of one, which I didn't exactly draw here. There's one, there's two. So you get this little interval here. And as soon as your X value hits two, your output, your Y value is two. Negatives are a little harder to think about because uh, an X value here, for example, negative one half or negative 0 0.5 actually goes down to negative one. So uh, visually, I think it's easier to understand. Um, if you try to apply logic to it, it makes my brain hurt a little bit thinking about negative values, but you're always moving them down to the smaller whole number, not up. All right, this function so where is this function not continuous? Let's think about the function. It should be pretty obvious where it's making jumps. It's not continuous at all of the whole numbers, negative one, zero, one, and two. It's making these jumps. So it's not continuous at all the whole numbers. And we write that as this weird capital Z. And this means integers right here. This symbol means is an element of. So this reads the function f is not continuous at x values that are integers. And what are integers? Those are just whole numbers, positive and negative. And we can write out all the integers in a very compact way. This is set notation. So not interval notation, but we're just writing down individual numbers here. So we'll look starting at zero, comma one, comma two. What will come after that? Of course, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this dot, dot, dot just means continue the pattern. So that's one, two, et cetera, et cetera. If we look zero, negative one, negative two, what comes next will be negative three, negative four, et cetera, et cetera. So again, the dots on the left just tell you it keeps going. So that's where the function is not continuous. Where is this function continuous? It's continuous on all of these small intervals here. So how do we write that? It is continuous specifically on the interval zero to one. And you could also move this over one to two but remember, it's gotta be closed on the left, open on the right. So you could write these all out, unioned together. So here's the union symbol, and underneath of it just says that, remember, k is an integer, so k is a whole number, and it's the union, you union all of the intervals from k to k plus one, closed at k, including k, but not including k plus one. And what's that equal to? Again, we're using the dot, dot, dot notation. So maybe we'll start in the middle here, zero to one, union, one to two, et cetera, et cetera. So next one would be two to three, three to four, and negative one to zero, union, negative two, uh, it's a negative one, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the floor function. It's sort of a simple function, but we can uh, see where this function is continuous and not continuous. And those values are very easy to see.